Recently, I've had some questions about how we might use multiple environments inside of our Angular Fire applications. Now, what does this mean? It means we have a development environment, a production environment, and you might also have something like a staging environment, but at this moment in time, we're just gonna focus on the first two. So how do we get a development Firebase environment and a production environment? Well, when we build our project with the Angular CLI, we have something known as an environment folder. If we take a look at that, we have environments and we have a production version and a standard version. If we were to select environment.ts, you would see that we have a production equal to false. And I've added this new key here, which is to do with Firebase. It includes your API key, your auth domain, and so on. So simply set up a standard Firebase project and paste in your information into this environment file. Afterwards, go ahead and do the same for your production file. So this time it should say production is equal to true, but use a different instance of Firebase. Now instantly you can see just the power that we have here. We have a development database that we can use to test and develop against and a production database that we can use to serve out to our clients. And when we're developing here on our machine, we're not tampering with that data. So when we've added production equal to true, and of course put in a separate Firebase instance into our environment.prod.ts, we can head over to appmodule.ts. And inside of appmodule, I'm simply gonna import the Angular Fire module as always. And then I'm gonna initialize the application with environment.firebase. Notice how I'm simply only pulling the environments from slash environments slash environment. When we build our application with the Angular CLI for production, it will look for the production version of this file. And what will happen is it will be initialized with a completely different database. So for good measure, let's test this out. I've also included the Angular Fire database module from Angular Fire 2 slash database. And inside of our app component, I'm simply going to inject Angular Fire from Angular Fire database and then going to specify the current environment as a Firebase object observable of type string. And that depends on the database that we're currently in. So what I'm going to do is specify this dot current environment is equal to the Angular Fire database dot object. And of course, access the environment key. That's all we need to do inside of our app component.ts. We can head over to the HTML file and add a new paragraph tag. Inside of that paragraph tag, we can say you are currently running in, and then we can scope to the current environment. And of course that is async. So I'm also gonna add a dollar on the end of this just for simple naming conventions. And then I'm also gonna surround this with brackets and say dot value. That will simply give us the value of the current environment observable. And I'll also add mode onto the end of that. So once we save our file, we should then see you are currently running in either development or production mode. I'm gonna restart our project before running this. And to do that, we can run ng-serve. And what this allows us to do is run our application in development mode. You should then see you are currently running in development mode. And of course, this reflects the fact that we're running ng-serve without the dash dash prod flag. So let's run our application again with dash dash prod. If we run ng-serve dash dash prod, it will then change and access a different version of our Firebase database, a completely different instance with a different API key, and we should get you are currently running in production mode. So of course this does extend when you build your application with the dash dash prod flag that will ensure that your application is ready for production and of course uses the production environment variables. So that's how we use different environments inside of our Firebase applications. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io for more courses and Angular content. Until next time, I'll see you very soon in that next video.